G'day. In this episode of the Oracle Mobile Application Framework Online Training, we'll continue on from our previous episode on DBT components, where we looked at graphs and gauges. In this episode, we're going to take a dive into learning about the DBT map components, that is the geographic map component and the thematic map component. Let's start with the geographic map component. Simply put, the geographic map component is for a mobile application where you want to display a map. Did you guess that? Yet specifically, the geographic map component is for mobile applications where you want a high level of detail in your maps, including roads, satellite imagery, a hybrid combination of both, terrain maps, and so on. In achieving this, the geographic map component is designed to support integrating either Google Maps or Oracle's mapping solutions. As you can appreciate, as the map component needs to make a call to these external services, this requires that the mobile application has a live connection to work with these. There is no map caching facility, though arguably those are a specialised type of mobile application that you would purchase separately and could access by using a URL scheme to call and open them from your map application. Just like other DBT components like charts, the geographic map component is capable of plotting locations with stylized markers so you can easily highlight distinct locations on the map. Later, when we look at the thematic map component, it has further capabilities to map areas rather than just single point locations. It's worth noting before we continue on, the geographic map component compared to the thematic map component the geographic map component has limited ability to stylize the map and location markers, though we'll investigate that further in a moment. Before using the geographic map component, depending on if you intend to use Google Maps or Oracle Maps, you need add relevant configuration entries to the map application adfconfig.xml file, found in the application navigator's application resources panel. We won't go into this in detail as it's a fairly dry point once you see the syntax, but to say in order to use either mapping solutions in a production environment, you need the appropriate licenses from Google or Oracle. For development purposes, it's generally fine to use the services without the licenses or keys, but it's up to you and to ensure you've obtained the correct licenses and are compliant with the licensing conditions from both vendors. Note, if you don't configure either of these entries, the geographic map component reverts to using Google Maps, which arguably is most customers' preferences anyway, and this is okay for development purposes. From here, we'll now look at the specifics of the geographic map component and how you use it. The IDE does give you a number of tools for helping create the maps via the component palette and more, but ideally from a learning perspective, it is the XML tags that you need to learn, and that's what we're going to look at here. So the geographic map component is represented in XML as a DVTM tag, standing for data visualization tags, mobile tags, of which the first property to consider of the geographic map is the map type. For Google Maps, this includes the road map, satellite imagery, and a hybrid of the two with both the satellite imagery and roads. The terrain map type is an outlier. It shows roads plus elevation terrain, as can be seen in Mount Eliza here. Of course, like many other components, there's a lot of other properties for influencing the look, feel and operation of the map. Animation on display will bounce the location marker that we're about to add when the map first displays. Initial zooming set to auto implies the map will automatically zoom in to what it thinks is an acceptable height to show detail. Or you can override this with a zoom level of 0 to 8. As we look through the different XML tags for the geographic map, do realise there are a lot of properties we won't discuss as we want to focus on the basics of what you need to know. So we'll leave you with some homework after this episode to see what cool effects, including animations, styling and so on you can add to your maps. Once you've selected the type of map, you then need to define the layers of additional information you want to show on the map such as location markers. This is done by introducing additional child tags, such as the point data layer tag, which will represent one or more points or locations to show on the map. The point data layer is made up of one or more point location tags. The point location tag literally draws a location or marker at a certain location on your map. You can do this by accepting an address, such as 17 William Street, Perth. 
Just like when you use Google Maps, the map component calls Google's mapping service to locate that address for you. Obviously, the more accurate the address, the more likely the location will be found in the map. The point location tag when used with the geographic map tag can also support some other location schemes, such as point XY, which uses latitude and longitude values as decimals to find and plot a location. It's worth again clearly noting that the point data layer tag supports multiple point location tags, which can use different location types, point XY in the first example here, and an address location type in the second example. And of course, it doesn't need to be hard coded. The point data layer tag supports deriving all of these values from a data control binding. And you can pump in a huge array of location and that's what you want to do. Most of the XML component properties support EL, so certainly little needs to be hard coded. But it helps while teaching to show real values rather than those derived from a bean or a data binding. For purposes of teaching, let's just wind back to where we've defined the map the point data layer and point location. As we saw before, let's use an address point location, 17 William Street, Perth. But this time we're going to further define the point location with a child marker tag. The marker tag allows us to, in this example, override the standard locator icon with a coffee cup. The marker also allows you to support actions and navigation where the user selects the appropriate location icon in the map. Or another common use case is to include a show pop-up behavior. Invoke a pop-up with additional information. So in this example, a trivial message is shown, but you can show all sorts of information in here about the location selected. This brings up an obvious use case. When the user selects a location on the map, can we fire any events and handle them programmatically with code? The geographic map component and its children support a number of events. The geographic map component itself supports both a map input listener and a map boundary change listener. The map input listener fires when practically the user undertakes any operation on the map. The listener itself receives a payload, which you can use to programmatically determine the type of event and the XY coordinates in the map where the event took place. This is useful, for example, if the user is tapping on the map to create a new location, so the event allows you to detect where the location is. Alternatively, the map bounds change listener fires when the user resizes or repositions the overall map. This is useful for when in the map, Rather than showing a certain location, you might need to look at the whole area, such as a suburb, for example. Thus, when the event fires, the listener is given the new center coordinates of the map, as well as the left top and right bottom corners. Another component that receives events is the point data layer component, which represents individual locations on the map. This has a selection listener, just like a normal data collection such that when the user taps a location or marker on the event, you're really just tapping a row of a data collection of which listener gets given the key of the selected location. You can then use this key to programmatically act upon that location in your math application. As you can see, the geographic map is a fairly easy to use component and a very common component across mobile applications, as when you're out and about with your mobile phone, remember the called mobile finds, seeing a map of where you are or where you need to be, or for the Oracle use case, logging your location in an enterprise mobile app will be very useful. While the geographic map is great for real data on a map, including roads and satellites and imagery around that, sometimes you must admit though, it's just too much detail. Rather, for businesses and analytical purposes, you may want to use a more stylized map to show business data like the sales per region. This introduces the other map component known as the thematic map. The term thematic map is used for when you want to use maps to show a particular theme of data, usually still representing physical locations, but may plot, for example, social data or political data or economic data against cities, states, regions, nations or continents. For example, if you've ever 
watch TV while the North American federal elections are on and then seen a map like this showing the results of the US presidential elections by state, or a regional map that shows you additional charts showing you populations per age per group for each country, or maps showing the world's worst polluters by GDP. These are all examples of thematic maps. A very powerful visualization for showing data plotted against cities, states, countries, and regions. The thematic map component that is available to you in map applications comes with a number of pre-built base maps, including the world, various countries, regions such as Europe and APAC, and so on. What makes it particularly powerful is you can add your own custom maps, and these can be any image, including well, maps of course, but floor plans to buildings, maps of parks or theatres, flight paths, hey, you can name it, it can be represented in the thematic map. Unlike the geographic map, as the thematic map is based on a number of pre-built maps, which are just images installed with your application, a connection isn't required for the thematic map to be shown. And also, unlike the geographic map, which only allows limited styling, the thematic map provides a wealth of styling options to add not just location markers to your map, but also areas and shapes and colours and text and much more. So let's have a look at the code for a thematic map to build up our understanding of how this component works. Once you've dropped the base thematic map component onto your page, the first thing you need to decide is what base map you'll use. In this example, we've taken the Asia Pacific APAC base map. Next, each base map may have one or more available layers that you can display that we define in the area layer child tag of the thematic map. In this example, you can see I've selected the region layer. And alternatively, I've selected here the countries layer. You need to ensure you pick a layer that is available for the base map, and these are defined in the relevant tag docs for the components. Once we've picked the layer, we can then define what data we want to show in the layer via an area data layer tag. The area data layer tag supports a number of area location tags where you can pick out specific name locations of the map and apply styling. In this example, we can see I've specified Australia with the AUS code. All countries are defined by the ISO 3166 three letter code. If we were alternatively showing the USA base map and its states layer, the states are defined in the area location tag with a two letter code. Only these codes are all defined in the tag documentation, so it's recommended you become familiar with this. Given we've selected the location AUS or Oz for Australia, we can then add the area child tag, which allows us to individually stylize that location. In this example, we're using a simple blue fill to highlight Australia. Note the area data layer tags allow us to specify multiple area locations. So I've extended the example to color China red here. Let's wind the examples back to just Australia and the single area. So beyond areas, we might also want to put markers on the map. In this case, within the area layer, we can also define a point data layer and point location tags, just like we saw in the geographic map. So what I've done here is reuse the point location, latitude and longitude from previous examples to add a marker with a coffee cup. Note, unlike the geographic map, for the markers in the thematic map, you can add considerable more styling. Here I've dropped the coffee cup, replaced it with a red diamond and a textual label. Like the geographic map, you're free to add as many areas or points as you want to the thematic map, and you can also derive this data from bindings. Again, the purpose of showing the hard-coded values in the tags in these examples is so you can see what actual data is required but this can readily come from a bean or a binding rather than just being hard coded. I also mentioned that the thematic map supports custom maps or images, which is useful for displaying, say, airline seating, a schematic of a machine, a warehouse layout. There's really no limitation besides your imagination here. The custom map support in thematic maps supports one or more images for different resolution layouts and devices. On the custom map, you can define point locations for the thematic map to refer to, but unlike what we saw previously with the base maps, it does not support areas. 
Creating the custom maps requires you of course have the images, but you must also create an XML file to define the map, its layers and its points. In this XML file you can see we're defining a base map for a bicycle. This base map, which is made up of one single layer, a bike, represented by a single bicycle.png image, is located in the public HTML base map directory. You are free to define multiple layers, but for teaching purposes we will restrict ourselves to a single layer to keep this explanation simple. You can define more than one image for each layer, effectively scaled versions of each other that the thematic map will use when more screen real estate is available to avoid pixelation of smaller images being upscaled. As you can see, we've also defined a number of points on the bike with specific point names such as body, handle, tyre, seat and so on, as well as the XY location these are located in the map. To use this custom map in our thematic map, we need to define the source of the XML file, again, which is directory under the public HTML directory in our application, as well as the actual base map name, bike map in this case. Then, using the thematic map component is just like we saw previously, though we're limited to points, we cannot use areas. So here we use the bike area layer and then refer a point data layer point location tag to the body point name marking the location with a red circle and some text. And here we can see the end result. As you've seen, overall the map components provide all sorts of excellent opportunities to your map applications and will likely be a central part of any compelling mobile application. That concludes the episode, so thanks very much for your time today.